cosmic principle summarized. The Creator is the all-knowing mind of undivided, still, and unconditioned light. Mind thinks in electric pulsations, which constitute the universal heartbeat. Mind thinks because of desire to manifest what mind knows. The electric pulsations of mind thinking are concentrative decentrative sequences, expressed in light waves. Concentrative thinking produces formed, dense, visible bodies from invisible space by integrating large volumes into small volumes. Decentrative thinking disintegrates dense concentrative bodies and returns them to invisible expanded space. Mind knows all idea. All idea is creation. Thinking takes idea apart by dividing idea into two opposite electrical conditions, which multiply through interchange to create many forms of many ideas. The light waves of thinking create electrically, vibrating sensed bodies. Electrically vibrating bodies cannot know anything but can sense everything. Conscious mind cannot sense anything but can know everything. Consciousness is static. Sensation is dynamic. That which you can sense you cannot know. That which you can know you cannot sense. The permanent realities of life are balance, love, truth, and cosmic law. These are the qualities of mind, which you cannot sense. You can only know them. The temporal realities of life you can only sense. Permanent realities are qualities of mind. Temporal realities are quantities of sensed matter in motion. You cannot know a sunset sky but you can see it. That which you can know about a sunset sky is its beauty, for beauty, like love, truth, and cosmic law, is reality which can only be known. You can know the permanent attributes of God but you can only sense the temporal body of God. These changing temporal effects I sometimes term unrealities, as opposed to permanent reality. Cosmic Principles Concerning Mind and Body 1. Your mind belongs to the undivided and unchanging universe of the still magnetic light of all knowing. 2. The undivided is one, the one centering cause of the divided two. 3. Your mind is you. Nothing happens, or can happen to you. 4. You center your thinking. Your thinking extends from you, but your thinking is not you. 5. Your thinking is divided and changing. Anything can happen to your thinking because your thinking is divided and changing. But you control your thinking. Your thinking is under your control. Your thinking expresses your desires. You are what you think. You make yourself into the image of your desire. You can be whatever you desire to be. What you now are is the product of your thinking. You could transform yourself almost overnight by balancing your thinking. 6. Your body is a record of your thinking, therefore your body is divided and changing. Anything can happen to your body, because your body is divided and changing. Your body is an extension of you. It manifests you through your thinking, but it is not you. You control it as one unit of creation, but it is also subject to all other units of creation, for all units of creation are inextricably connected with one another. 7. You are not a purely physical entity. Your body is not you, but a complex state of motion that is an extension of you. You are an eternal spiritual being. No matter what happens to you no matter what you experience, your essential being remains untouched. Therefore, nothing has happened to you and nothing can ever happen to you. Cosmic Principles Concerning Cause and Effect 1. The Undivided Light of Knowing is Cause the divided light wave thought bodies brought forth by thinking are effects. 2. Every effect in this universe every happening, every event, and every experience takes place only between divided thought bodies. 3. All effects are manifested by two-way interchange of motion between oppositely conditioned bodies. 4. Every thought that extends from the undivided light of knowing mind has a body, formed and pattern in the image of the thought. 5. Whether or not the thinker gives his thought a visible, material body, the thought itself is embodied in the thinker. The moment he thinks the thought, it forms a patterned body, which instantly becomes a part of his own body. 6. No thought remains invisible. Every thought is a created thought body, which fashions the patterned form of the visible person. 
the invisible thought of beauty becomes the visible pattern of beauty in the body of the thinker. For instance, a person who thinks music takes on the quality of his musical thought. 7. Nature concerns itself with the making of divided, changing bodies to record the divided and changing thoughts of mind, which created those bodies. 8. You concern yourself with the making of divided, changing thought bodies in the image of your thinking. This is what you do in life. 9. The thought that you create internally is part of your body. The thought body that you create externally is an extension of your body. This extension is what is called your creation. 10. Your thought is universal. Your creation is universal. Your thoughts and creations are universally extended. Every thought to which you give a body is extended to every other body in the universe and becomes a part of it. 11. You cannot think a thought that is yours alone. You cannot receive from the universe for yourself that which you have not first given. That which you have is the image of what you have given. 12. If your thought is out of balance, your body is out of balance in the measure of your unbalanced thought. However, you cannot unbalance the universe as a whole. The whole verse moves to balance the effect of your unbalanced thought. 13. You cannot have an unbalanced thought or perform an unbalanced action without the reaction in the measure of that unbalanced thought and action returning to you. God gives you the right of free will to think any thought or perform any action, but retains the right to balance your unbalance with an equal reaction. 14. In making thought bodies to manifest our knowing and patterns of our desires, we have what we call good experience, which makes us happy, or bad experience, which makes us unhappy. Good experience arises from knowledge of how to produce balanced thought bodies. Conversely, bad experience stems from ignorance of balance and how to extend balance in our thinking. The Law of Balance Here is the Law of Balance, as I wrote it, during the time of my illumination, in the message of the Divine Iliad, Great Art is Simple. My universe is great art, for it is simple. Great art is balanced. My universe is consummate art, for it is balanced simplicity. My universe is one in which many things have majestic measure. And again another many have measure too fine for sensing. Yet I have not one law for majestic things, and another law for things which are beyond the sensing. I have but one law for all my opposed pairs of creating things, and that law needs but one word to spell it out. So hear me when I say that the one word of my one law is balance. And if man needs two words to aid him in his knowing of the workings of that law, these two words are balanced interchange. If man still needs more words to aid his knowing of my one law, give to him another one, and let those three words be rhythmic balanced interchange. To the extent that you understand the law of balance, you will build a balanced life of happiness and masterful achievement because you will be working knowingly with God. Then, no matter what happens in your own life, you will know what to do about it. Rhythmic balanced interchange between every pair of opposite conditions in this divided, thought wave universe is the cosmic law that man and nature must, and indeed do, follow. Nature constantly creates local unbalanced such as storms, tornadoes, crashing avalanches, and stellar cataclysms which is instantly balanced by, and in fact is in itself the outworking of, the law of balance by the whole. Man constantly ignores the law of balance and pays the price of his ignorance in his crashing business failures, enmities, unhappiness, and illness. All local unbalance, such as tornadoes, cannot affect the balance of the whole system. Nor can your ignorance of the law of balance affect your balance in respect to the universe. Balance is a process of constant balancing out. Therefore, Every unbalanced action of yours is always balanced by an equal and opposite reaction. When you begin to live in accordance with knowledge of the law of balance, you begin to work knowingly with God. But, as the message of the Divine Iliad states, all men will come to me in due time, but theirs is the agony of awaiting. That agony is the cost of ignorance of the law of balance, which ignorance is simply ignorance of the true nature of being. In this respect, I quote from the message of the Divine Iliad, when man knows me in him, then am I he. I, the one, am not divided into two as pairs of opposites of me. I divide the two extensions of my thinking, but I am not my thinking, nor am I two. 
When man thinks man alone, denying me in him, then is man's image man's, not mine and man's, for the pattern of my balanced rhythmic images within man may not be seen in him. Nor may the glory of my light be seen in him or known by him. When man thinks me, through knowing me, then is he patterned by my image and I am he. When man thinks me in him, then is man's balance absolute. When man so thinks, then has he all power that I, thy father mother of all creation have.